Looks like a few folks that were contacting me might be here now. So let's go ahead and get started and hope those who were having some issues are able to get in. I love seeing the variety of people from all over the world here. This is amazing. And one of the things I love about being able to do this virtually is that not only do we get folks from the Pacific Northwest, but I'm seeing all the way from uh, Canada, Victoria, BC, we have Ottawa, New Jersey. This is awesome. I love it. So I'm super excited for the variety of, um, of location here. Let's go ahead and jump in and uh, get started. So my name is Alana Davis, and I'm your host and meetup organizer. I work with e-commerce shops to remove friction from the buying process. Uh, basically what that means, I, I rescue Shopify websites um, that focuses on making them more effective and attracting more visitors, providing better SEO and increasing the conversion rates, which is a fraction of the cost of a full redesign. So trying to save you money while we're at it. Here's a quick look at our agenda for today. Um, we're going to spend just a few minutes going over some of the sort of uh, housekeeping items, if you will. And then I'm going to introduce our speaker uh, in just a moment here. First of all, let's talk about our sponsors. Shopify is more than just an e-commerce solution. You can sell anywhere to anyone with Shopify's e-commerce platform and point of sale features. Obviously you all know about Shopify, that's why we're here. But if you do have any questions on it, feel free to reach out either in the chat or afterwards and I'm happy to answer questions for you. We also have uh, Eric Davis of LittleStream Software, the maker of JSON LD for SEO, that helps your Shopify store win which results in Google search, getting you more organic search traffic that converts better, all without having to fight for a better rankings or paying costly for ads. And I'm going to add their links for you in the, um, the chat, just in case you would like to learn a little bit more about them. I do have a couple of events coming up. Um, they're still in the works, so I am not able to talk a little bit about them at the moment, but I'm planning something for March and then hopefully again before the summertime. But if you do have any topics that you would like to see or areas that you'd like us to explore a little bit more on, let me know. We're going to send out a feedback, re feedback request tomorrow and hopefully tomorrow. Um, this really helps me to know really where we should target some of our uh, our topics, but then also if there is something specific that we need to revisit or if there's areas for improvement, I want to make sure that this is a valuable resource for you. And I have heard in the past that uh, the need for ongoing conversations. So there is a Facebook group as well, and I encourage you to join us there as well. So without further ado, I would like to introduce a good friend of mine and our speaker today, Deb. Deb is the CEO and founder of Causeway 305. Welcome, Deb. Thank you, Alana, and thank you everybody for joining us today. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get this party started. Looks like we have a pretty lively crew today, so I'm pretty stoked to get this going. Oh, look, look at these announcements. All right, let's present. Boom. I should also add, Deb, sorry about I forgot. So if you all have questions, please feel free to put them either in the chat or use the Q&A. We're going to try to save some of these towards the end of the the session, but if anything is super urgent, I'll make sure Deb knows, but otherwise we're going to try to save until the end. That's a good point. And I won't be looking anyway, so go ahead and feel free. If you don't want to forget, just go ahead and put them in there and, and we'll, we'll address them afterwards. But today we're going to be talking about leveraging Shopify apps for best practices in social commerce. Of course, we're going to be talking about the apps within the Shopify ecosystem, but we're also going to be talking about some other areas that I see as potential opportunities for you as merchants to leverage as we move into 2021 and further that I think could be super exciting, especially in regards to social commerce. Um, there's a ton of information that we could be covering today, and I think we've got maybe about an hour. I know my attention span won't go beyond an hour, so I'm going to try to limit the amount that I'm talking here today and focus on you towards the end. Um, so we're going to kind of breeze over a few of these areas in lighter detail. Um, some of these things you may already know a lot, so it may be kind of elementary information for you today. 
but there's a lot of exciting changes that have occurred, especially in relation to what Shopify op offers for social commerce. So I'm excited, let's dig in and let's get started. So today we're gonna to be discussing why social commerce is important to Shopify merchants, you. Uh, we're also gonna talk about the platforms for social commerce. And then we're going to talk about some of the apps that are available. There's a myriad of apps available in the app store already. So we're just gonna talk about maybe five or six of them. And then I'm gonna share with you some examples of how brands are using social commerce to drive sales. But before we get into that, I think we kind of have to take it back to what is social commerce. So social commerce is not new, it's actually expanding. And it's essentially what it sounds like in the name. It's the use of social media networks like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, Snapchat, and WhatsApp to drive product sales. So buyers can discover and engage in product purchases socially through brands directly, through influencers, friends, and people within their social networks. And mobile commerce is here to stay. So um, when was the last time you purchased a product from a friend, a family member, or a colleague's recommendation? I remember when I was growing up, my mom and our neighbors moms all stood out in front of the yard and they had their direct mail in hand and they would talk about the products that they bought and now today we're having these conversations on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok etc and that's only going to continue to grow. Mobile commerce is set to overtake e-commerce sales this year and post-pandemic we're expected to see 42 percent of consumer shopping will continue online so um, let's disrupt this industry. All right, so let's first focus on Facebook and Instagram shops. They both are a platform for brands to set up an online shop and to sell products on both Facebook and Instagram and Shopify has made this super easy. Um, products can be discovered through your brand's organic pages or through stories and ads. So if we look to the right, we see the shop on Facebook for Uncommon James. These shops would need to be configured for your particular products and what you want to showcase, but we'll dive into that a little bit deeper over the next couple of slides. And then if we look to the left, we have the Instagram shopping tab that you can discover new products. So you don't necessarily need to be following these companies in order to discover new products that are available within them. Of course, as you see mine, you can see some of the things that I'm interested in. Okay, so Facebook Shops allows you to curate collections and highlight new product releases on your shop. Again, as I mentioned to you before, you want to configure this to suit the needs of your customers. On the example that we have shown here in the picture, MeUndies has a lot of evergreen products and they also have specific collections that they showcase throughout the year. So in this particular case, we're seeing their Avengers collection and their dinosaur collection. And this is really cool for the raving fans to be able to go in on their mobile device, sneaking in the middle of work and seeing what the latest trends are, the latest products are, and either add them to their subscription or just throw them in the cart and buy them directly through the app. It's free to set up and you actually don't have to advertise to benefit off of this. So if you're not doing it today, I would highly recommend setting it up as soon as possible and getting off to the races. And here we have Instagram. So anything live in your Shopify store catalog is available to tag for sale in organic posts on Instagram and Instagram stories. Adding tags makes your products appear in the explore tag. And we're gonna go into that a little bit deeper because the more tags you have per product post, uh, the more engagement that you'll be able to receive. And this is super easy for you to do. A lot of the content that you're going to be featuring on these posts are going to look like this. So it's a highly produced looking product um, photography post, but then UGC is really great to leverage for these types of initiatives as well. Everybody wants to see themselves uh, before they buy products. So if someone looks like you or they feel connected to you in some way, they're more likely to feel that trust factor in buying that product. And this could happen, this transaction can occur natively on the app or you can direct them to your website. So it makes it super easy if you wanna upsell with bundles or you just wanna sell the product and get the quick sale. All right, so we have Instagram stories. Um, I'm sure you all have played around with this, but as a business, it's 
super, super helpful in being able to engage with your customers. Now, I would advise if you were to go the strategy for your business or even in your personal life, you want to really try to be consistent with it. So people um, that are not familiar with their products that you want to become move from the prospecting into more the awareness and through down to the purchase. You want them to be able to um, get to know your products a little bit more. So having the consistency and showing your products on a more regular basis and having them expect to see it at specific times and a certain cadence makes it super handy in them getting down to that purchase funnel. This is a really good example from the Little Market. They're one of my favorite brands on Shopify. And um, not only are they socially ethical, but they have really cool products. Um, so what they're showing in their organic post on Instagram stories, their copy is also complemented on the landing page that you see on their site. So they're directing this traffic directly to their site and the copy is complimentary. I would imagine that if you scroll down this page, you'd also be able to buy a bundle. So say, you know, you, you're a self-care kind of person, you can maybe be able to buy the sea salts mixed with a, with a candle mixed with something to like soak in the bath with. So there's 500 million accounts that use IG stories every single day. So as you can imagine, the opportunity is really endless here. Now, I want to mention though, um, the swipe up feature that's available um, does have a few different restrictions that are available, um, but there are ways around it. So let's not fret, we can find ways around it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So ways around um, the limitations for the swipe up functionality on Instagram stories. Um, <clears throat> so you either have to have 10,000 fault, 10, yeah, 10,000 followers on Instagram, or you have to have a verified blue check mark or both. Um, but the ways around it are, in this particular example, they have a sticker that will you click on it and it'll lead them into a purchase funnel or this product page that's directly natively in Instagram. So you can either view it on the website or you can transact. They've set it up to view on the website, but they've given you more information about the product, including the price, and then you can go and purchase on the website. Um, if you set it up a different way, you can purchase it directly within the native app. Um, you can set up long form videos on IGTV. So there's now two different ways that you can create video formats on Instagram, um, IGTV and Reels, which is the short term, short form video that is competing with TikTok, which we're going to talk about a little bit later in the presentation. IGTV is going to be better for more the educational. So think like, I don't know, tutorials or um, try on hauls or things along the lines that you want to lead them into a more educational space. Or the third way is pay to play. So you can pay to swipe through ads. Okay, this is really cool. So Instagram live shopping. Um, brands and content creators can add products to an Instagram live video, and there are two different options that are available to you today. I imagine this will grow as well. So today you can pre-plan and you can add up to 30 products to a collection before you go live, or while you're live doing your tutorial, you know, maybe you're, you're a beauty brand and you want to show, um, how to try on, you know, do like a makeup routine or in this case, they're, they're showcasing this hat. I would imagine they're showcasing multiple products. So they're probably also talking about the jacket and the, the, the hoodie and the, you know, whatever else she has going on there. But in this particular case, we're seeing her hat and then you see the pinned product um, that you can go in and view the product and then go down the purchase funnel there. So super handy, super cool. Um, and Definitely something that I would highly recommend trying if you have the resources and the time. Two and three visitors to an Instagram business page are non-followers and are new to the brand. So there is a really, really enormous opportunity here. All right, so TikTok is, I call it the new kid on town. Um, it's not new, new, but it's relatively new to some of us. And it, it's actually a Chinese app and it actually has a different name in China than TikTok, but we call it TikTok here in the US. 
it's video content viewed mainly on mobile devices. And it's not just, you know, your Gen Z niece dancing or your brother or whatever to videos and trying to claim their fame. It's now an awesome opportunity for brands to get in front of prospective customers. These users are searching for brands, becoming brand advocates and creating content using your products. So um, 100% would highly recommend looking into this further and diving in the early bird gets the worm, if you will. So it's free to use as a brand or a user. You can create exciting content that you can test out. You can go as far and wide with, with your imagination with testing out that content as you'd like. And then you can, as I mentioned, find UGC content to use in other areas of your business. So using, leveraging their hashtag capabilities, reaching out to influencers, there's a, a wide road of opportunity there for you. Um, and it's in the fastest growing audience now are people over 30. So I think when people think TikTok, they think, you know, millennials or Gen Z. And I'm here to tell you it's growing and um, you should definitely be in there with it. Okay, so TikTok um, recently rolled out a live stream shopping capability last month. Walmart just piloted the shopping live stream on TikTok and it was huge. And the opportunity is tremendous here as well. So during a live stream, as a product appears on the screen, a user can pin the product and add it to the cart directly from the app. <sighs> Mind blown, right? And then at the end of the live stream, a list will be shoppable. So every single item in that live stream will be provided in a list that you can then purchase and go buck wild. So in particular case for Walmart, it was huge because they were doing a back to school push. Imagine the amount of products they were able to push through that initiative. Okay, and then TikTok has a couple of different hashtag challenges. In this particular case, we're gonna talk about the sponsored hashtag challenge plus because I think that that's the bigger opportunity for your brand, uh, but just know that there's also an organic one that's available as well. So what it does is it adds a shoppable component to your uh, to a brand sponsored hashtag. So what you do is you reach out to a few different influencers and you say, hey, I'm going to send you my product and I want you to create a video during this date and I want you to post it during this date and this time and use the hashtag blah, 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 and um, push people to buy that product uh, during that particular time. And then users can discover your products on that hashtag landing page and transact directly on your website. Now, the beauty of this is that people that maybe the three or four influencers that you use, you paid for, but then people that wanna jump on this trend of the hashtag, um, could also leverage the hashtag. So you could be kind of in it there if they already have your products or they quickly buy your products, then they can kind of jump on the train of that hashtag. So you're kind of getting double exposure in that way. And then once it's over, it's still available to see. So uh, there's long lasting abilities with this. All right, let's talk about Snapchat. So Snapchat is kind of the oldest game in town, but they've leveraged, I think, one of the best um, uses of technology. So they use augmented reality to help um, in, in regards to e-commerce, they help push products. So if you have a product that's available on feet or on your head, so think sunglasses, beauty products, in this case, in this GIF, we're seeing shoes, um, you can leverage their lenses to allow users to try on your product. And this is gonna be super handy in, in regards to, um, I guess, cutting down on customer service issues and returns, and also just making raving fans. So other people are gonna be able to see them trying this on because they're gonna post these snaps and then more exposure to your brand is gonna become readily available. So highly recommend you look into this a little bit further. It's really, really cool. We're gonna look at a couple of examples that happened last year, towards the end of last year, that I thought were really cool. There were There's a ton of examples available, but these three examples that we're gonna talk about are two examples. Um, I think we're the coolest. So L'Oreal Paris did a push to um, help inspire consumers to buy their their new makeup. Um, during the pandemic, I'm a female and I, I will admit that I wasn't really wearing a lot of makeup. And I think makeup is one of those things as a female, at least in my experience, you either have to touch, feel, or just kind of get 
that trust behind before you buy it. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of returns or things are just going to end up in landmines, which we don't want. So um, having the ability to try on, and I say that in air quotes, these, this, these beauty products, I think, enabled them to inspire people to get excited about these products. They made a fun, immersive experience, and then they did see a huge spike in their sales by 1.6% compared to the same time last year. So really, really great opportunity, awesome campaign. And then Dior launched a new sneaker on Snapchat um, in November of 2020, I believe. And they used lenses to allow users to try on six different pairs of shoes on their feet. Well, why, why this was super interesting was the fact that the shoes were really expensive. So the price point was high. So having the ability to try on a high price point ticket item was super helpful for them in, like I said, mitigating returns, customer service issues, and helping to propel sales to move forward. Plus, it was just really cool. And Ralph Lauren, uh, this, this I think is really neat too. Ralph Lauren um, partnered up with Snapchat to offer 12 looks to dress your Bitmoji in. And all of these looks are actually um, part of their collection. So you can buy them in their store, you can buy them on their website. And I mean, just the branding element of this alone was really huge. So what some of these brands are saying about Snapchat, I think, is what I'm here to talk about today, which is really we want to get in the middle of all this. We want to disrupt the industry. We want to help you be meet your buyers where they are and where they're spending the most amount of time. And we want to do this now. And I mentioned earlier, the early bird gets the worm. It's like, okay, well, there's a lot of brands that are doing it. We're talking about larger brands. Well, how does that affect me? I'm you know, a mom and pop store in Portland. Um, well, you know, I would imagine, let's say you sell coffee and you used to be able to put your coffee in local coffee shops around town. And so people would go to the coffee shop around town and the barista would recommend your coffee. They would say, oh, what kind of coffee do you like? This would be perfect for you. And then your product would fly off the shelves. Well, not only did COVID change the landscape of what we're doing, but I think it's changed it for the years moving forward, especially in 2021 and 22 and moving forward, where people are expecting a different experience online than they've ever experienced before. So this does matter to your brand just as much as it matters to Levi Strauss and Ralph Lauren. Uh, so what's up cart? I know that there was a lot of information kind of put out there about legislation and restrictions and things like that regarding WhatsApp this week. Today, we're just going to focus on the cart and what's available. For those of you that aren't aware, WhatsApp is owned by Facebook. So lucky for you, uh, Shopify loves Facebook and there's a huge integration between the two. And the availability with commerce is humongous. So not only are you able to um, interact with your customers through WhatsApp messages, but your users can browse a catalog, they can transact through a single message, and it's really going to cut down on the back and forth. So <clears throat> if you're currently doing your customer service through emails, I would highly suggest you consider looking into moving into either chatbots or hiring somebody to talk through these social networks and um, really meeting them where they want to be engage in these types of conversations. <clears throat> okay, so what we all thought we came to talk about today, Shopify apps or social commerce. And I promise that we talk about five or six of them. Some of them are pretty obvious based off of what we've already talked about. Some of them are less obvious. The first one is Shop App. So Shop App is a mobile app by Shopify. And it's a shopping assistant to help you shop, pay, track packages, and monitor your reduction of your carbon footprint. Word to the wise, I have been buying like crazy during COVID and apparently shop is telling me that I've only saved nine trees. I know I've saved more than nine trees. Now here's the trick. You have to actually transact through the Shopify, Shopify app, app, Woo, can't speak, in order for it to tra track your carbon footprint. So co don't come for me later when you see that you've only saved a tree. You have to transact directly through the app. Um, but I follow Manduka. They're a brand that I love. And um, when I go to their shop, when I go to 
their profile on the shop app. I'm able to quickly see their new arrivals, any discounts that they're offering at the top. I'm able to shop now. I'm able to review previous orders. If I want to reorder, I can go to their shop. I can see their offer. They're offering free shipping. I can contact them directly through the app. So lots of really good opportunities. It's free. If you do not have this app downloaded to your iOS or Android device today, actually right now, like just stop, don't even listen to me. Download it right now and I'll wait. No, I won't wait, but do it now anyway. All right, so the TikTok app. Um, Shopify, in the, this just recently was announced at the end of last year. Um, the Shopify integration makes it super easy for brands to sell on TikTok. So you can manage your TikTok ads directly from your Shopify dashboard. And Shopify is now offering a $300 ad credit to get started. Guys, if you are not taking advantage of this, that's insane to me. It The conversions are high. It's a low entry point. I mentioned before, the early bird gets the worm. Like, I don't know if any of you that remember Google ads, like the pay-per-click program when clicks were like 50 cents under a dollar and then you waited and now they're like ridiculous like get in there now get in there now and take advantage of this this credit i said it and i'll say it again probably at the end okay so we'll move on um so we've got the vop app um it's a shoppable tiktok app it's it creates a shoppable feed on your shopify store using your product catalog and ugc from tiktok now, this is awesome because you can place it on your homepage, you can place it on your product page, and this just provides an extra layer of trust on your site. Um, the caveat is, is that you need content on TikTok in order to leverage this, right? So both things need to work in tandem. So back to what I said to you before, go start using that credit. And then as a result, you'll get people to start using your products and you'll have UGC that you can then use this trust on your site. Boom, boom, win, win, win. The 460 app. Uh, so, gosh, when I was in the development side in 2014, I used to recommend this app all of the time. I just think it's super cool. So I'm going to tell you the good things about it, and then I'm going to tell you the challenging parts about it uh, that we can get through. So it's a shoppable Instagram and UGC app which allows brands to leverage seamless connection between their IG and Shopify store. So it's similar to the VOP app, but for Instagram. It makes your Instagram shoppable on site and it provides UGC directly on your site. So again, on the product page or on the home page, and you have the ability to find influencers and in UGC content. You can collect rights to use the content because you can't just use people's content willy nilly. You need to actually contact them and ask them if, it, if you can use it. And um, then you never miss a mention on Instagram. Now, I said I was gonna talk about the bad parts or the challenging parts, I think I called it. It's expensive. It's very expensive. They have a light version that's not that bad. But really to get the full functionality out of this, you want to use the heavier version, which is, is it is going to be expensive. So start with the light, work your way up to the expensive as you grow out your program. Done. All right. So snap, snap, blah, 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 Snapchat ads app makes it super easy for you to get up and running with ads on Snapchat through your Shopify um, dashboard. So you can launch ads directly in Shopify. It's easy to set up and you can run a couple of different ads on there. So you can do, um, you can create story ads allowing you to showcase anywhere from three to 20 different products, or you can create dynamic shopping ads, which you're then just gonna retarget people that already showed interest in your products already. So those are kind of lower end of the funnel and should be easy to get them and push them down the purchase funnel that way. Again, with Snapchat, low cost, high, C, uh, high engagement, um, we're seeing high conversion rates there. So would highly recommend you looking into it for your business. It's not for everybody. It is, a, it is going to be a younger demographic on there, whereas TikTok is, is skewing. Um, it went from Gen Z and it's kind of skewing to a higher demographic. We're still seeing kind of a younger demographic there. So depending on what you're looking to accomplish, definitely do your research there. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, so the last app that we're gonna talk about that's available within Shopify is the Swave app, 
this is really cool guys. So it rewards ambassadors who buy your product with discounts, cashback, loyalty rewards for showcasing your products on their IG stories and tra tagging your brand. So, you know, they buy your products, they tag you, and then you're able to offer them an incentive. In this case, they're showing offering 30% cash back. Maybe you want to offer them some sort of incentive. Um, but in the dashboard within this app, you're able to track how that IG stories impacted the buy on that product for future purchasers. So you're able to track the wave of that UGC. Oh, see the play on word, swave, wave. All right, I'm moving on. My jokes aren't funny. Anyway, um, and I mentioned in the beginning that we were going to talk about an opportunity within the Shopify world that isn't an app, but a huge, mongous opportunity for you Shopify merchants out there. So get excited because here we go. So you stay in an Airbnb and you sleep on the mattress, you take a bath in their bath, you use their espresso machine, you got on their balcony, you use their speakers for music. And during your stay, you're able to scan a QR code and go to a marketplace that showcases all of those products and you can buy them directly on there. <sighs> yes, I know, mind blown. Also the opportunity with that is branding. So it's great for branding. Um, imagine a world where somebody is laying on the mattress that you sell or using your speakers and they're on their IG stories and they're you know, talking to all their friends and they're like, check out this mattress. I never slept any better than I slept last night, tagging Casper or whatever you sell. Um, you're just getting a wave of, of um, brandy through that and also UGC content that you can leverage for the future. Um, so yeah, definitely look into Glimpse and I'm happy to send you information on that afterwards. Conversational commerce. So this exploded in 2019, 2020. I see it going in a gangbusters in 2021, which we'll get into further. And then I see this going even further in the next five years. So we're going to talk about that all here. So conversational commerce, in essence, is the intersection of messaging apps and commerce. Quite simple, right? So you can either use chat bot bots, which is essentially, I don't know if you've set up your email marketing flows, where you set up abandoned cart emails, or you set up a welcome series, or things along those lines. So these chat bots are basically answering customer service questions that frequently could come up in conversation. So somebody either sends you an SMS text message, or they send you a message on Facebook Messenger, and you're able to get in there while you're still asleep and answer those questions, offering them free shipping or an offer on their purchase, educating them on the benefits of your product, and really helping them down that path to the buyer's journey to the conversion. Now, I think this is going to explode even further this year. If you don't have a service like this installed, stop what you're doing, install it today. Um, but we're going to talk about, so I mentioned that TikTok came from China and China also has an app called, and I'm going to butcher the name. Uh, I say WeChat. I know that's not how it's pronounced in China. And it's where our future is going. So I did a talk at Social Media Day in 2014, I want to say, and I predicted all the things that we talked about today already. Um, and so I'm doing this talk today and I'm predicting where things are going to be going. And I want you to hold me accountable. So everybody, thank goodness this is being recorded because we're going to be holding me accountable. Future Debbie will be glad that she talked about this today. So this is where I think things are going. And this is available within WeChat today. Uh, so WeChat, it, for those of you that don't know, it's kind of like WhatsApp, but it's a little different. It's got a lot more like social component to it. Um, and they just recently rolled out a product called Good Product Circle, where, guys, this is crazy. So you can um, receive product recommendations from your friends. You can recommend products to your friends within conversations and posts already that exist. You can transact directly in the app while you're having these conversations. So listen me out here. Imagine a world where you're having a conversation with your mom and you say, I'm really homesick for Texas. And then you see an ad for the Texas candle from Homesick Candles. <laughs> so yeah, I see, this, um, I see this exploding. I see this as the future, hold me accountable. 
All right, so speaking of the future, where do we think social commerce is growing in 2021? Here are my predictions. We're in January, we're sitting in January, 2021, and I see live streaming and UGC content being really big. So all of you on this call, get on it if you're not already doing it. March, 2021, I see conversational commerce, chat box, chat, commerce, all of that, text, SMS, all that really making a huge dent. And then in September of 2021, I see marketplaces like we talked about with Glimpse, where offline and online sales of products merge together, they convene. And then in December, towards the end of next year, I see groups selling like product recommendations of products on social media, having um, at least being introduced into the marketplace in the US. So in summary, start with one platform and build out the strategy from there. All of this sounds like a great time. And I've told you to install this app and do this and do that and do this and do that. And I'm only half joking. And I know it could be overwhelming as an SMB. You only have a few employees and you're wearing multiple hats and everything seems really chaotic to begin with. So the last thing you need is to start going gangbusters on every single thing that we talked about today. Don't worry, just start simple, start with one of the things, tackle it, learn about it. It may not work in the beginning and that's okay. Learning is just as important as succeeding. So if at first you don't succeed, try again. And this goes for all of your testing on social media. Um, so set up your Facebook shop. You don't have a TikTok, get going with that. But more importantly than anything else, be consistent. So promise yourself and make a plan to be consistent, like I mentioned before. So people are going to expect to see certain products on Instagram stories at a, at a time and a day. Be consistent with that. And the more consistent you are with that, the more products you're going to sell. Trust me on that. And then lastly, how to get in touch with me. Well, we I hope that you use these tips and you capture more of the market share in your products, but you can find me on Twitter at, at Deb Mecca, at Instagram at Deb 2 dbs because the first one wasn't available, Mecca, or you can email me at Deb at Causeway305.com. Thank you all for joining us today. And I guess we'll take some questions. I love it. Thanks so much, Deb. That was, can you actually leave your contact information up for a little bit? I think that would be helpful for folks to be able to um, jot that down if they need it. But thank you so much. That was amazing. And you kept making jokes about mind blown. Like I was literally mind blown half the time that you were talking. (laughs) <laughs> lots and lots of information. So that's so wonderful. And I know I have questions. I've seen a couple come through. So I'm going to start tackling these and share them with Deb. But if you have questions, feel free to either put them in the chat as we talk or in the Q&A option. Um, but let's go ahead and start tackling some of these questions. So cool. one of the the questions that I had first and foremost, because um, a lot of the brands that you had mentioned uh, were much larger brands, right, than, than many of us might be or than many of our, our if, if you're an agency, maybe your clients are. So do you have to be a well-established brand in order to benefit from these kind of opportunities? You do not, no, that's a good question. So um, there you know, are all of the opportunities available to every single one, should you be doing all of them? No, um, I do think that regardless, well, I guess we'd have to sort of talk about the use cases, but I think nine out of 10 times, regardless of what you're selling, I think IG stories is worth testing out as is TikTok. Those are like the lowest hanging fruit, but even without all of that, like, do you have your Facebook shop set up? Do you have your Instagram shop set up? That's super easy. And then just start tagging products in organic posts, start there. Um, but I think Instagram stories in tandem with that would be a good, good play. Um, and I do think because it's such an early time for TikTok, I, I would suggest really looking into getting into there. And that, that integration with Shopify makes it super easy for you to do it. You don't have to have a technical, you don't have to have a developer to set up the pixel. It automatically happens um, within the app. And you also don't have to have a designer. So they have 
pre-made templates that you can use. You can drag and drop your images directly in there and you can get off to the races with some really cool content on TikTok with very low friction points. So you don't need a lot of, you don't have to be resource heavy in order to get into these places. And um, like I said, Shopify has made it easy for you to do that. If you were at big commerce or another platform, good luck, but you're, you're in the right place. Awesome. And then uh, I'm going to jump around to some other questions that had popped up. So Larry had mentioned that there's a lot of recent backlash against Facebook. What are your thoughts about alternative platforms? And you sort of talked on this, but is there, I'm going to sort of read into his question and say, is there something that you would equate to similar to Facebook as opposed to just a completely def different platform? Because Facebook seems to be the place to use. That's a good question. So, um, I mean, I'm just going to default to TikTok again, just because I, I just think that there's such an opportunity there that probably a, a lot of brands aren't leveraging today. They don't just don't, it's like, it's really scary to start something new and it's really scary to start something new that you don't know anything about. Um, but Shopify's led the way for you. So I, I, I hope if nothing else today inspired you to really look into that and see what's available within that sales channel. Perfect. Um, Amy, oh, I'm sorry, Cassandra says, how do you ensure protection of intellectual property when selling on Facebook? Their new permissions include rights to modify, sublicense, and distribute anything posted on their site. Yeah, I kind of alluded to the fact that there are these like regulation. I'm not a lawyer. I don't really um, know the ins and outs of those regulations. It's all pretty new. So I don't like to speak on things that I don't really know a lot about. And I don't know a lot about that. So I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. I think that's a, a great answer, Deb. And so if you do have questions on that, I my recommendation usually is to say, talk to your, your legal advisor and because it might be different for different people. I don't know. So I would agree with that. Um, Amy asks, how do retailers leverage the shop app? I use it for personal shopping, but how can I, how can it help my biz? Um, I guess, Amy, I would ask you, what kind of product do you sell or products? What are you, what are your products? I will also say that, um, oh, she's saying jewelry, but just to, to really add to that too, is like from a personal standpoint, just having somebody on there, if I want to shop locally, it makes it a lot easier for me to find other lo local um, vendors. So think about it, how you use it and the other people might be using it in the same way. Sorry, Deb, go ahead. She said jewelry. Oh, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. So jewelry, that's perfect because that, that goes into like the head and feet situation. So I would look into lenses. So you can um, create a specific lens for your products and have people try them, try on your jewelry which could be fun. Like they could do it on their ankle. They could do it on their neck. They could do it on their ears. Okay. Chloe says, I hopped in late. So apologies if I missed this in the beginning, but how much does UGC affect conversion rate of a given product sales? Ooh, that's a wide open ocean there. Um, I UGC is another area of trust that you can impart to customers that, are interested in your products or maybe even don't know anything about your products and want to feel connected in some way. So I mentioned before how the mothers used to stand out front and recommend products. I think the new way of product recommendations is coming from not only influencers, but people just like you or me that we feel connected to in some way that are wearing your products or using your products on social media. So UGC is huge in not only ads, but also organic content in creating raving fans, creating that trust factor, creating um, people to, to feel like what it would feel like that, that. I think people buy on emotion. So again, I keep using words like feel, but that, that invokes that kind of emotion. And I'm going to actually go back to Amy because she provided a clarifying statement. It looks like she was looking more towards the um, the shop app. And so can you clarify if there is the uh, AR, VR sort of idea on shop app? Because I don't remember that actually. Oh, no, there is not AR, VR on shop app. Although we can watch the space. I feel like 
I, Shopify is doing so much with AR and VR right now that I wouldn't be surprised um, if they did something with that. But right now, no, it's it's mainly just a place to uh, track and discover products and follow your favorite merchants and kind of see like, you know, the stuff that's on sale level up to the top and be able to kind of connect with them. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I like tracking my carbon footprint. So I'm very upset about this nine trees. I need to call Shopify tomorrow, talk to them about that. It's wrong. I will say though, you know, you, you touched on it just now. Um, and I sort of alluded to it earlier, but just the ability to see what is new in one place, you know, I feel like early in 2020, when, um, when we had a lot of the, the BLM movements and everyone was moving more and more towards shopping at, um, at black owned stores. And it, it was almost like you had every single place, every website had a list of black owned stores that you could shop at. It's sort of like that. And actually the shop app does have, um, a black owned filter on there, but yeah. it's sort of like that where you're able to look at stores that are close to you or that have certain needs um their filtering is still pretty limited but when you think about it from a perspective of a business any way that you could put yourself out into another marketplace um, that allows someone else to discover you even though you may not actively be doing much on there i would think is still better than nothing at all so just being able to have your your someone help promote you essentially in another marketplace is a business decision, but it seems like it's sort of a new no brainer to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. That is a good point. And I think you can, um, you can use that intelligence elsewhere. I would imagine there's some analytics behind what happens within that app that you can use in other areas of your business. Yeah. Okay. Adriana says, do you recommend using a business account for TikTok, a personal account, or does it matter? A business account for sure. Um, because of the integration between Shopify and TikTok, it's a no brainer. I mean, you really, anybody could benefit off of how easy it is to set up the pixel and use the templates and get in there and get started. Um, I guess it depends on what your needs are though. Cause if you are the if if you are a good face of the company like i see a lot of ceos be really good um ambassadors for their own companies so if you could do both i'd say both if you only want to do one i don't know who has the bigger following but then if you want to advertise i'd say your store love it and then she also asks can you comment on instagram stories versus instagram reels for e-commerce yeah, so I think Instagram stories has the bigger opportunity for e-commerce today, but I think it's going to grow. I think Reels is still early in its infancy. Instagram's just trying to catch up with TikTok. They're, they, this is the second time they've done that. Like they, they copied Snapchat, and then now they're trying to copy TikTok, and they're playing catch up on all of that. Um, so they, they've really honed um, their craft on the Instagram story side for e-commerce. And like I mentioned, there's stickers available if you don't have 10K followers or the, the verified badge. So you can get in and get going selling products in there fairly quickly. And um, with reels, those are short um, videos. So I would say go for IGTV over that because you could do tutorials, you can do try on hauls, you can do more educational founder stories. Um, you could do a lot of really cool things through the IGTV and there's not a lot of brands that are using it. So you can stand up from the crowd. So if you're a hyper local company and you want to stand out from your competition and you're not really making a lot of traction, I'd say go the IGTV route over reels at first and let them catch up. Perfect. And then Maria. Maria asked the question, and I'm actually going to tag in mine too. She says, can I hire a virtual assistant to do all this? And my question was, what does this exactly mean from a time investment? Like how much should people be planning to invest in social commerce? And, and then I think Maria would have to decide if she has that time or not to be able to hire a virtual assistant. But can you address those two pieces? Sure. Um, I'm going to address the virtual assistant before I address the time, because this is my recommendation always for brands. 
Um, you know your brand better than somebody that's outside of your company. You're the raving fan of your products more than anyone else. And I understand the reason for your questioning being a time element. Um, but we make time for the things that are important to us. And if you set aside a certain amount of hours per week to just test out a few things on this, maybe you set aside two or three hours per week to focus on some organic content where you're tagging products and doing some IG story sticker situation I mentioned before. Just those two things and you dedicate two to three hours per week to that. Um, if you divide that up per day, it's really not a ton of time. I mean, you're drinking your coffee in the morning and you're browsing the internet, you're on Twitter or whatever. Um, you could be setting up these organic posts in that time period or creating content for TikTok. Like I mentioned, I mean, there's templates available. So there's not a ton of heavy lifting that goes into that. Um, but you're the, you are your own brand ambassador and you, you're your own raving fan. So I'd say get it set up first on your end, you as the business owner. And then once you've tested and figured out and know and really know what you don't know, then you can pass it off to somebody else and give them a brief on what you want them to do. Um, but having them control, be in the driver's seat on the initial launch of that, I think takes the control away from you and you're not doing those learnings. And so then you don't know what success or failure looks like. Like, how are you gonna measure success when it's never been done before and you don't know what you don't know is my advice there yeah and i would echo that i, I see maria's making some comments that she's got three businesses and been doing it so long by herself um and i and i think that the the thing that i always say is do things yourself first so that you understand the ins and outs because especially when you hire externally uh if someone was to leave you would have to know how to pick it up so that you're not left hanging um, it's similar to if you were to hire an employee, right? You would want to be able to train them and, and help them learn it. But I always say, do things yourself for a bit. And then it's up to you, obviously. I don't know your workload, neither does Deb. So like, ultimately you have to make that decision, but understanding it fully by yourself first is I think really key. Yeah. And also like, it, it doesn't matter if you're paying this person $10 or $3,000 a month to do this. Any money going out, you're going to expect money to come in. And it's going to be trial and error in the beginning. Like there may not be, you're going to have a ramp up period possibly where you're going to have to figure things out and trial and error things and um, get a following and all that fun stuff. And so the money going out may not equal the money coming in necessarily. And so that might be a little tricky in the beginning. Okay. Tracy says, can we do Snapchat ads without having to have Snapchat? No. Oh, wait, as a business or? Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I would interpret. No. So sorry, Tracy, you have to get a, a Snapchat account. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you want to do. Right. You don't have to get it personally, but you would have to get it for your business. Uh, and then she adds, but do you have to do snaps? No. I mean, well, what would, I guess, what would, uh, what, what were you helping to accomplish? I mean, are you just trying to do ads without snaps or I'm trying to follow. Yeah. To run ads. Tracy, do you want to talk? I can, I can allow you to talk real quick. You can ask your question. I'm not sure if you can unmute yourself. Are you there? Yes. Or am I there? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah. So basically, I mean, we do ads everywhere and just adding one more platform and having to post there is just one more thing. So we were hoping to just run ads on it. I mean, we could, you know, have a few things living on our profile, but do we have to be consistently posting like everything else? No, you can just run ads on there. That's a good question. Sorry. I made you come on and talk. Um, yeah, you're fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can just run it. Does it affect the ads at all? Do you get better traction if you do post or does it matter? It won't matter because it's going to be based on them, the targeting. So it's going to be based on targeting. And also yeah. um, I mentioned there's two ways that you can advertise through Snapchat. So you're doing 
essentially prospecting, which is finding people that don't know anything about you. And then the other one is remarketing. So people that already came to your Shopify store, if they're on Snapchat, we're going to remarket them through Snapchat ads. So they're already okay, yeah. on the brand anyway. That's awesome. Love to hear that. What's the same for TikTok or you really do have to post on TikTok? Um, it depends. Like you need a thousand followers to do like the live thing that I mentioned. Um, so that would, that would require you to be kind of consistently posting and building up engagement and following and all yeah. of that stuff. So, I mean, it sounds like a lot and I know it sounds overwhelming and I, I'm hearing from the questions that people are feeling a little overwhelmed and that definitely was not the point of this talk and I'm hoping that you're all coming away feeling a little bit more inspired versus like, ah, because um, it is, it's a lot to take in. And I would just say, concentrate on one of these things and do it really, really well. And that's what success is gonna look like for you this year, instead of trying to be everywhere and everything and feeling overwhelmed by this conversation. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. You know, and one of the things that people often get caught up with is they, they wanna be everything to everyone. It's like, you can't, you have to pick what you can and can't do and just accept that until later, maybe you can do something else. So picking something, seeing if it works, um, I should ask too, Deb, do you have a recommendation on how long somebody should give it a try before they say it works or it doesn't work? You know, it's interesting because people tried advertising. I know we, I touched on Pinterest and then we didn't talk about Pinterest at all. And I wanted to say, if you all want to give us some feedback on today and you wanted to have a conversation about Pinterest next, um, let Alana know, and maybe we can do a follow-up conversation just on Pinterest alone, because I think that there that is like one of the largest search engines available that a lot of products aren't really leveraging. Um, but I think people tried Pinterest like early on and it didn't work and because they weren't doing it right. And they were like, Pinterest doesn't work. And it's like, well, mm, uh, no, I just don't think it worked at the time and you weren't doing it necessarily correctly. So again, with the idea of like, if at first you don't succeed, you can try again. There really is that philosophy. Now, is every product perfect for every single platform? No. Should you be pushing and pushing and pushing until it, you know, trying to fit a square peg into a round hole? No. Um, but I do think that you do need to trial and error things. I can't really give you the time limit because it depends. It depends on your product. It depends on your budget. It depends on your reach and frequency. You know, there's so many variables to that, that I'd hate to put myself in a bucket and say, after two weeks, that's a good, it's sure. not really um, responsible of me to say, but I would say if you are excited about a platform and you do see the potential in it, try it. And if it's not necessarily working great, um, it doesn't mean that it won't work. It just means that it's not going to work now that you may need to build up your following, build up your engagement, get more UGC content, like focus on more of the organic side of it before you plug a bunch of money into it. So today I think I talked a lot about stuff that you could do for free. Um, if you're not doing any of these things, I would be for focusing first on the free, building up that community, um, unless it's TikTok. <laughs> um, and, and then take it from there or Snapchat, sorry. All of the above, all of the above. I mean, no. Uh, and it sounds like we are going to have you back now for Pinterest because now you have two requests, so you can't get out of it now. Whoa. Well, I think <laughs> we, should, we should end there then. Are we, do we have more questions or? This... Oh yeah. I have a couple more questions um, that's coming. And actually I'm going to ask, I'm going to jump around a little bit because we were on Snapchat a second ago and Elle asked, um, she said that we aren't on Snapchat, but we're interested in ads. Is, is there a platform that we have to build awareness on in, or to ensure ads will perform well, which I think is sort of what you alluded to earlier, but I wanted to, to make sure that Elle got that question answered of like, do you really have to build on it or can you put ads out there and see if it works without engaging? I love that question. So Snapchat's super inexpensive right now. I'd say throw some mud against the wall and see if it sticks. And then if it doesn't pull it back um, relatively quickly and go build up that engagement. So that's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer to it necessarily in a straightforward way, but luckily the risk is low. 
it's not like Facebook where I'm telling you, go throw your life savings into this thing that will maybe work, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, and then Dave says, are there good examples of using these apps in the B2B space or does that even make sense? It does actually. So, um, IGTV is great for B2B actually, because again, that longer form video is really good. Um, B2B also for TikTok, I think there's a, there's an opportunity. There's a play there as well. Um, <clears throat> I guess it would depend, like if you have Shopify, which I do for your, for your service. Um, I'm not saying you should do it, but like probably should do it. Um, and you have those products in your catalog, you can probably tag them on Instagram as well. So I'm going to be doing that soon for Causeway. Um, again, plug, 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 but yeah, I, I think there's opportunity for B2B. Yeah. I think it's probably just ima uh, uh, imagining it differently. It, it's not a product necessarily. It would be a service of sorts, right? So it's probably just a, a different way of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, if you're selling courses or you're selling yeah. some kind of services, the bundle of some description, um, I see IG in a few different varieties being available for you and okay. TikTok. And then I have one more question. So if there's any other questions that you have that are burning, definitely put them in either the chat or the Q and A. So Thomas asks, how focused should I be on building a newsletter audience? Or should I be focusing way more on building a social media audience? I sell handmade goods. Cool. That's a good one. Hmm. So newsletters retention, but it's also kind of all parts of the funnel. So is everything else? I don't know. Thomas, that's a good question. You only can pick one. I was going to say, do you have to pick one? <laughs> <laughs> I, my, I think my answer would be yes. <laughs> Both. <laughs> like, wait, I feel trapped. I, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I would say your newsletter is super important and I am a, a strong advocate for email marketing because I think that it's highly educational, but I would test out some of these other, you know, a, one of these other areas, even like, um, even like the, the WhatsApp cart, I think could be interesting to test out. Yeah. And Brett, um, hi, Brett, by the way, good to see you here. Uh, he says to use social media to build your newsletter audience and then owned media is really important. So essentially you're building that funnel, which is how I do it too. I use social media to help build my newsletter up. Um, so it's, it's really important to, to, I think, to have both going for you. Yeah. Um, All right. I'm trying to Maybe. see if there's any other, we have a couple more that are popping in. They look like comments, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, Clark says, which platform is best for 55 plus to female demographic with money? Facebook. The end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's where I would have recommended to you. <laughs> like Pinterest. I don't know. Like it depends. What are you selling? Um, if you only have one choice, I'd go Facebook, but I'm super into Pinterest also, but it has to be like, you have to do Pinterest, right? Again, that would be a, a whole separate other talk. Yeah, I guess it, you're right. It does depend on what you're selling because, and, and, um, yeah, again, Pinterest is a longer talk, but you know, Pinterest is the long haul. So it's more, are you building that audience over a period of time or is it something that you're, um, looking to do a quick sale, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Like you want them to transact through the app right there and then versus like the uncommon James example where, or the, the little market example where you can upsell them into the bundle by going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh, we have a couple. So Allison says, I sell mom and baby products. Are you seeing moms on TikTok? Yes, I am. And you should be there too, seeing them. Um, wait, you sell what? Mama? What do you Mom sell? and baby products. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, that's huge on TikTok. So my friend just had a baby and she posted something really cute. She has a wardrobe room and um, she's a shoe fanatic and her baby was like eating, chewing at the shoe. And she's like, my baby's taking over my wardrobe. 
and it was really cute and it got insane engagement. So yeah, there's a lot of mommies on there. You know, it's really funny because I feel like I'm such an old fart that like, I'm not, I personally am not on TikTok and I have zero plans to be there. But then when Deb and I were talking about this, I, I was kind of feeling like I should. And I think that's what, you know, we're learning from this presentation. Or I'm taking away from it for sure is, you know, the, the world of social media as a whole, it's not limited just to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Like there's a world out there that we just don't, I think we're often too afraid to give it a try. And you know, if nothing else, giving it a shot helps you just to see and you're better off giving it a try and then not knowing it all. Yes. That's a good way to end this. Set. Not, I think we should close it out right there. <laughs> yeah, it's done. Drop the mic. <laughs> Well, Deb, thank you so much. That That is the last question. So if anyone does have questions um, after this, feel free to reach out to Deb. I will be sending the um, feedback form as well. And I promise you, Deb and I really do want to know what your thoughts are um, because I am now going to make her come back and talk about Pinterest. So <laughs> now she'll know <laughs> where to go next time. Um, but thank you all for joining us. And I am so grateful to have you all here. And I wish you all a lovely afternoon, evening, wherever you might be. So thanks again, Deb, and we'll chat soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you all for joining us today. And uh, I will see you on the internet.